Hello. I will do a magic trick. I will make you all think about one certain thing or a character to be true with just one click. All right, that was a fairly easy one, but I have one more, far more greater than this. I'm talking about creating the world, bringing to life a believable place which does not sleep and react as you approach it. But if we want this spell to work out, it has to appeal to everyone, not only a certain group of people like uh, LARPers. So what do we do? We are taking uh, stunning landscapes. We, we are taking uh, beautiful scenography, hand-picked by the rules I reveal later. And also we are taking just a pinch of something that everybody loves. In our case, that was a franchise of Harry Potter. But uh, that's not all. When we are organizing such a massive event, uh, the professional approach to the task is needed. So, uh, when I'm starting to do that, well, uh, as a head of the volunteers, I am starting from picking up a scenography team. I love crowdsourcing, so everyone, uh, so I invite people, and everybody is welcome. And uh, but at the same time, our deadlines are treated very seriously. Uh, so uh, they can easily make you no longer part of the project, which is, which is like developed, uh, visualized here. Uh, when you're engaged, on the other hand, you're coming with us on site, and that's where the real fun is starting. <laughs> okay, so before the game, <laughs> before the game, we developed a strict chain of command. I am here, somewhere, uh, somewhere down on the. Uh, right corner as a head of as a head of volunteers and the scenography up above me there is our location boss who is responsible with talk for talking with owners of the location that we use and somewhere else on this diagram there is a scenario team which communicates with us through google uh, documents like charts and sheets and we also include like one celebrity he's called klaus you may heard of, heard of him uh, just to attract the popularity among the LARPers. <laughs> <laughs> so we can say we are working in fail-proof mechanism. Everything to be able to prepare a movie-like feel of Rowling's creation. Uh, we want to do that by scenography, of course. Don't be fooled. I believe that the LARP one should be treated differently than the movie or theatrical one. To describe it, what is happening? I will use this simple graph. Uh, this might remind you from the part of the mixing desk of LARP. On the one side, we have a 360 degree uh, illusion, one-to-one uh, one visualiza visualization from visual references. And on the other side, there is complete symbolism, like a black box theater. It, may, uh, it, has, uh, it is made to represent the way the scenography is made on the LARP. So I believe that uh, when doing the kind of event like College of Wizardry, we should be around 25% near to the 360 degree side. Uh, I believe that this is a perfect scenography because it makes it real and tactile, but at the same time, this is more foolproof and usable uh, for, for the players. Uh, to put it simply, you have to be able to open the book and read it, uh, and not uh, it cannot be carved in foam or something. However, a small shift into symbolism side states that we want uh, that the book doesn't have to be perfectly made because the LARP scenography, uh, uh, the, this book won't be examined by no one under the microscope or so. But there is more. I realized that the 360 degree illusion can be associated with plausibility of the game because it creates many rules and it uh, can easily uh, shut down the player's initiative to do something from them and the symbolism uh, attracts players because it makes uh, the game more playable. Uh, it, uh, and as I said before, the Potter game attracted many Potter heads and having such a motivated players is awesome because they're willing to spur their creative time creating immersive smaller things. Mm. And 
uh, through that, like this, for example. Oh, not this. Yes. <laughs> okay. And plausibility of the game. Uh, yes, the previous chart. Okay. So I added to this chart uh, vertical axis, uh, which we have uh, participant inventions, and uh, on the one side, uh, there are the decorations provided by uh, players and handmade as a fandom stuff. And there are also uh, things provided by the organizers. Uh, and I think the College of Wizardry is like in a half of this axis. Uh, because uh, uh, the play on, the ones on the one hand, we have the players who create uh, immersive things like this, which was really, really amazing. And on the other side, on uh, and on the other hand, uh, it gave us more time to do more big things like uh, ghosts burning, uh, burning in flames. Uh, so yes, uh, going to the end of the presentation, I just said you something about how we design uh, overall scenography. And, uh, but what do we really want? Uh, there are four simple rules uh, or priorities uh, which we want to follow. The first one is that we decided to put our ambition aside uh, and uh, make the scenography be completely in service to the plot. So the scenography should be supporting the plot. Uh, the second priority was that the scenography must be usable. We, uh, I would rather have a one potion classroom with 1,000 cookable props inside than have an abandoned part of the castle decorated because it's, there is no point in doing that. Uh, as we have this luck to have the Trocha Castle, we, haven't, uh, we actually have most of the decorations there, so we can focus on creating the responsive world, uh, like writing letters, creating in-game interactive posters, or uh, newspapers new, uh, being in-game or written during the game, and then printed and uh, being thrown around the castle. And the last thing is synesthesia like uh, in-game sweets, pumpkin juice all around, and maybe uh, the alchemy mechani mechanics, uh, which uh, are based on the senses of uh, taste and smell and vision, uh, which is interesting, I think. You can dig on that. <laughs> and uh, this, is, uh, this was pretty technical, uh, I, I know that. Uh, but this is how we do our magic. And I think that you all, dear LARP organizers, you all are making this magic happen with every dream and every project. Thank you. Thank you, Agatha. <laughs>